Today, we learned some critical insights into buying or leasing your next office space. How's it going, everybody? Jason Croft here, the credibility craftsman. Today on the show, we've got Sadia Sheikh. She is a commercial real estate extraordinaire, um, introduced to me by Steve Dietz from 900 Pounds Creative. You may have seen his episode on the show. Awesome guy. And he was just all over the fact that like I've got to talk to Sadia, right? Um, she's just a powerhouse and doing awesome things. And he was so right. Uh, we had one conversation on the phone and I was blown away at the amount of complexity that goes into renting space, buying space. Um, but besides that complexity and how many steps uh, it takes and so many factors, right, that go into it that I was never even thinking about before, it's amazing to me what Sadia and, and her company, what they do for these businesses to take them through that process and make sure that they're making that best decision, if, you know, thinking a year from now, five years from now, um, and helping them navigate those waters, it's it's just, it's an invaluable service. It's really fantastic. Um, and as you're watching, we have uh, one uh, crazy little technical camera goes flying because we're, you know, driving around 80, 90 miles an hour. Not really. But uh, camera goes flying. So after that, footage is a little bit out of focus, but not too bad. Still, tons of value in there. And uh, just wanted to, to bring that up so, you know, you don't think we got in a wreck when you see the, the camera go flying <laughs> on there. Um, but let's dive in with Sadia Shake. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm <laughs> I like excited. To, I like to do a sneak attack start to the show. Okay. And surprise my guests. So oh. We're going. Sadia, tell everybody who the heck you are and what you do. Well, I'm Sadia Sheikh. I'm vice president at ESRP, a real estate company here in Dallas, Texas, based here. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> focus on commercial. People still do that. Oh There's yeah, they do. Okay. <laughs> yes, Dallas based. Dallas, yes. Um, yeah, so. Commercial real estate, and I mean, what you do is, I mean, you run the gamut. If you, if it's commercial, if it's real estate, you guys touch it. Yes. Yes. All things commercial real estate, we handle. Awesome. So, yeah, well, we I wanna, love it. That's great. And I want to dig into to some of those specialties. I really wanted to get your perspective, um, not only your story, but also your perspective on the massive growth here in, in Dallas, Fort Worth. I mean, it's just incredible. And you're right in the middle of all of that. <laughs> you oh, know, yeah. Day to day and seeing all of that. But even before we, we, we dig into that and, and more into ESRP for sure, uh, what's what's your background? How do you, what brings you here, all the way into commercial real estate and, and working for this firm and loving every minute of it? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I was born and raised in McKinney, Texas, so from here. Awesome. And uh, right out of college, I uh, started interning um, in commercial real estate. Uh, was a finance major and realized after an internship in the industry that commercial real estate has everything to do with everything, you know, all around me. And why had I never paid attention to it really before or been interested in it? So I started right out of college, uh, learning about companies and buildings and why people are growing and moving and expanding, and uh, which led me to my position, you know, eight years now in the industry. Very nice. Uh, I can't believe it's been that long. <laughs> of working with companies and figuring out what their real estate needs are. It's a major cost to them. But even more exciting is... I mean, we're in one of the best markets in the country. I mean, oh, Dallas yeah. Fort Worth has so many great things going for them, uh, for companies. So, and so, what is that? And, and I want to dig into some of that that specialty because it's from the outside perspective. I'm somebody who just sure I understand that there's people involved in the transaction when I need to move into a building, and you know, there's a building that needs to get moved into. Hey, there you go, yeah. <laughs> done, you know? And that's about the limit of my knowledge on that. But just having that conversation with you the other day, I mean, there's so many layers to what to look for, what a company needs to think about when they're first getting a space, when they're moving to the next space, and how far forward do they move, to, you know, in terms of growth? Do they fit their current needs or 
five years down the road. Can you dig into some of those kind of specialties and subtleties and, and all those kind of places you touch along the transaction? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I've worked with a lot of companies that are starting up and and growing. I've had companies that have had just exponential growth over the years and outgrow their space or they need a different type of space. And so a lot of the things to focus on is not just about finding where your office is going to be. There's lots of buildings all around in sure. DFW, different cities and, you know, uptown, all the way to legacy, you know, all over. Finding the space is, is just one small part of it. Where are you going to office? But it's, where do your where are your employees coming from? Where is your future growth of your labor? Who you want to hire, or what kind of culture you want to create? Well, how do you want to design the space? You know, how's it functionally going to fit for you and your company? And so, and then does that mean that, you know, you you do a one year lease, or you're in co working space, or you know, you start out there, or do you get permanent space and um, sign for three or five years? It depends on you know strategy. And so we really start with the company from the very beginning of the nuts and bolts of understanding your company. Yeah. You know, what does your company do? What, what kind of space are you looking for? What, you know, who's there now? What does your growth look like? And, and do you have some examples of, of maybe a, a, a complete scenario that you've kind of walked somebody through? Because there's, there's all those factors, but then how do those factors play out when someone is, well, hey, you know, we're, we're pretty tech, we're just kind of growing, we want to create this kind of environment, but we can't afford downtown we want to be a little bit out like how does that play out do you have any examples of sort of play that real world examples yeah you know we i worked with a tech company five years ago uh that was just a startup um in the energy side and they had decided you know with having three or four employees to start with um that Plain it was cost effective for them and they could still get around the Metroplex. So, and we started out really in a space that suited what they needed now. And, the, and we really just did a short term one year lease. Um, and then we looked at after that year, they realized where their customers were coming from, where their clients had, um, where the drive was, how much they were there versus them in their office. And then we ended up, you know, relocating further north to where a lot of those growth markets were for, for who they were working with. And, and, and that's so interesting too because. That's something that you, they couldn't know until they did it, until they hit that growth, growth point. That's interesting. And so part of that, the answer to some of this is, well, you just pick somewhere and, and, and start a little bit, right? Right. I mean, a lot of it, it, it ends up being where your people are, where your home yep. base is, that culture, the team you're trying to build, the company you're trying to build. And that's for startups, you know, and then it's, it also leads into people who have existing businesses today in certain areas. You know, we, we really like to come in and say the real estate's, oh. Well, hello. All right, edit point number two. Whoopsie. Still rolling. We're alive. There. <laughs> high tech, high tech show. <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> but so, no, for existing companies, like you're you're already somewhere, right? Or and your company's growing. You know, really the actual real estate part of it can almost be last. We we like to come in and you know, it's important to look at um where the trends are, where where do you need to grow, you know, where is your base growing, where are your customers, where are your competitors? Understanding the data data analytics of your company and industry and where you need to be. And, and how much do you dig into that? Are you getting, are you pulling that answer, those answers from the companies typically? Or are you actually researching and finding the, some of this for them or is it a combination? It's a combination. We okay. spend some time getting to know the company and we ask those kinds of questions that can give us those metrics that can help us you know, put together. Gotcha. You know, those types of, of heat maps for you. So you can kind of gotcha. see where you, where you want to be or where you should be thinking of going. Right, that makes sense. And you know, from talking to you about just about what you do and stuff the other day, I can tell that this is it's so much more than transactions and a role and, and a job. What is it about commercial real estate and, and just this area and the whole, you know, everything that you do, what's what's exciting you? What's lighting you up? You know, what really gets me excited is is the companies and the people. Love learning about companies, what they're doing, how they're growing, and and helping them make those right decisions. Because your real estate can really be a you know it's a big line item cost on your budget. And oh, yeah. 
And then we also love connecting people, you know, mm -hmm. connecting our clients to other clients or companies where they can do work together or find a way that we can work together. So, okay. I mean, that's the exciting part of it is um, because we work with so many different companies, mm -hmm. businesses, we get to know different industries and different people, and we love connecting people. All so there's the time. All, there's almost a, a, a biz dev for other people oh, aspect yeah. to it and stuff. Oh, Absolutely, because we learn so much about your business, and we learn so much about what's important to you mm -hmm. that when we know that about other companies, we love to make those connections. Oh, that's great! And then what a great you know company network building <laughs> oh, way absolutely. to approach things. That's fantastic. So many more individuals and companies should operate that way and instead of being so worried and territorial about well don't let these people meet these people and yeah. all that instead <laughs> like that's because that's gold that's what other you know ceos want to meet other ceos and get together and if you can facilitate that that's that's huge oh yeah we do that all the time oh that's great so i think i think what's i can see what's so fitting with why you're at ESRP because that really seems to your love of people and this business and everything seems to roll right into what they're all about. Can you kind of dig into ESRP and, and how they operate? Because it is, I think there's some differentiators there from, from other commercial real estate places. Yeah. We, you know, one thing I love about ESRP is we're just team oriented and focused. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not transactional siloed or by on our own. We really work together and, you know, we work from companies that are startups all the way to fortune 100 companies. Wow. Um, so all the way from deciding where their next office space is going to be to, um, the strategy, between the acquisition they just made of another company wow, okay. um, or their whole portfolio, um, even national um, and international portfolio. So uh, us being a firm in Dallas um, that has really captured the market of all segments, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I think that makes, it's a differentiator for us. Oh yeah. And so is there, is there a, any kind of specialty or typical vertical that you're in at all? Is it really just across all industries? And You know, I I mainly focus on office. We've got a great team that helps, um, that focuses on companies with our office portfolios. Uh, we also um, do all product types within our industry. So there's, you know, retail, industrial, mm -hmm. office, land. Um, so we kind of look at it from a corporate approach because some of our companies, you know, need help with their offices and their employees' corporate office and then some of their warehousing that they're making widgets and um, yep. they need help deciding, you know, where that warehouse should go, how much it should, how much it costs. Um, are they going to find the labor to be able to work and build those widgets? Um, uh, not just their corporate office of, of selling widgets. So we, we kind of service all, you know, all those different product types and then we mainly focus on helping companies lease space or buy real estate for their needs. We have a lot of companies that like to buy and then we have companies that own something that, you know, want to sell it and lease it back so they can take that capital and do some other things. Right. So that's great. Kind of all spread out. Yeah, absolutely. But it is, it is, it is a massive footprint in, in the industry though, um, that you keep expanding on, you know, as you should, cause it's, you know, you, you, that, cause that, I think that level of service is, being maintained all the way across. And so the more you can do that, the, the, the better. Yeah, we've really focused on, which makes it uh, why it's another passion of mine working at ESRP is that uh, the service side of the business, the service side of any industry really and businesses where people tend to grow and lose focus of. And mm -hmm. we've stayed on, you know, you're really providing a service, whatever service yeah. it is, um, adding value by, you know, solving the struggle. and and making it better for that company. So we're just um, service focused and oriented, not revenue, uh, different types of um, service lines within our company that we have to you know, achieve certain revenue within. Right, it's not just an Excel spreadsheet you're filling up. No. <laughs> <laughs> right, with all of this. And, and how much how much does that, that higher level of service, does that stay throughout, I mean, even 
once the transaction's done and all of that, is that, are you maintaining those relationships? Oh, absolutely. And I think another thing is, like I said, connecting our clients to other clients. I think it's important. It's, it's not about a one-time transaction. Um, it's about other needs that you have or that your colleagues have. And then it's also about what's going on in our market. What's changing? You know, we love it. And then to have having, you know, great speakers and events where we can share that with our clients, best practices in, in, in our industry and in other industries, you know, what's going on in the market, what, how people are hiring now, you know, anything that's of value, even to us, we love to share with our clients. So we tend to have lots of different types of events and speakers that can benefit all of us so oh, we can all great. keep growing. Yeah. What's, so if I'm a small business owner and I am, um, <laughs> and I need real estate, which I don't quite yet, but soon, <laughs> what, what am I, what am I looking for? And is that, do we need more, um, more things to sort of layer on top of this example? But what I'm, I'm, looking for for my audience are those sort of nuggets of what they should even be thinking about and things that maybe wouldn't even maybe you encounter this a lot that that business owners come to you for real estate for the space a generic like i just described in the, in the beginning like i need a building find me a building <laughs> and you're like well you actually need these 10 things or look at these 10 things what, what would that that be well first if you're a business owner and even if it's your first time to to go lease space or um, you're in a space or you're sharing space with a company, and the first thing is you need to use some real estate, some real estate professional, commercial real estate professional, no matter what. I mean, I, you know, you could go around and call on buildings. It's, that's going to be a di very difficult approach. Um, but you should always engage with someone to help you through this process. And, um, you know, the, we, we actually get paid, um, you know, that professional actually gets paid by the landlord when you're leasing. That's so okay. um, most business owners don't know that. Yeah, um, I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. you get actually paid by the landlord. Our fees are actually paid by the, uh, the landlord. Um, but in essence, that, that's built into your lease, sure. right? If you generally think about it. But as a business owner, there's no upfront cost or, um, check you have to write to engage with someone to help you through this process. Right. Which is, um, yeah, the whole point of that. And also another way to look at it too is like, because it's built into that lease and into every lease, you're paying for it. You might as well use it. And, exactly. <laughs> and have exactly. That uh, yeah. And you know, most of these buildings have, you know, leasing agents and, um, they are there to help you, but they're not there to, to help you on your behalf. Right. right. Um, <laughs> you know, with what concessions might be out there. And, you know, so that you don't spend your time driving around all day or trying to think of what building looks cool or what has what you need. Um, you can focus on your business because we find that it, it gets very time consuming where you, you get taken away from your business and what you do best. Oh, yeah. Trying I mean, to find space and move and think about the cost and I, setting up IT and, and get, having the space built out and worrying about the furniture. So we kind of pull all those components together. So first and foremost, use somebody. Um, preferably ESRP. Of course. Um, give me a call. Uh, <laughs> but um, use a professional. And then um, kind of think about your budget and also kind of think about um, your business plan over the next three to five years. You know, when you're leasing space, you know, it's not just about the one year or the two year. Kind of keep in mind how you what how you want your space to uh, work for your employees or uh, how much time are they actually spending there? How, how much is it out in the field? How much do you really need? And and we do help with that, but it help, helps when you come to the table with some of those, uh, some what ideas. you envision. Sure. Yeah, sure. what you envision for headcount and growth and uh, what you want in the culture of your work environment. And there's a lot of cool things that companies are doing and there's some cost-effective ways to do it and it can get really expensive. <laughs> right. So, but kind of understanding your vision and your goals and what culture you're trying to create is really, you know, what you want to bring to the table when you start the process. Yeah, that makes sense. So what else, what is, what are some things that, that business owners often get blindsided with during the process? Maybe if they, especially if they haven't um, gone with a professional to kind of help them through the process, um, what, what kind of things that do they typically get hit with? I think the cost, the mm -hmm. cost of, 
of the move, the cost of actually finishing out the space, um, if you're building out offices, um, the cost of the furniture, the timing. You know, Dallas Fort Worth is. I mean, we're really booming, so it takes it takes a little bit longer construction timelines. Wow. Um, when you're ordering furniture, you want certain things, or setting up your phone systems or IT. You know, the the timelines. So I see a lot of a lot of people who, you know, the cost and time kind of kind of comes out of left field, or wasn't yeah. what they were ex expecting. Yeah, I hadn't even thought about that. <laughs> the, the construction and build outside of things because everybody's constructing and building out <laughs> and doing that right And now. another thing is, you know, the the lease document itself. I mean, it's it's uh, it's something really important to go through and take your time to really understand everything and negotiate what you can with your landlord. Um, you don't have to just sign what was given, you know. Well, that's it's what not, I was going to ask. It's not like multifamily or okay. I, when I say apartment, multifamily, I mean apartments. Right. It's not like uh, you know, renting a house in an apartment where you're like you're given this lease and you're going to sign it. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is, you know, everything in there is so important to pay attention and read, and and is negotiable. Wow. And so, really making sure that you're not so quick to get in that you just sign something that yeah. you know can be an issue. That, I mean, that's you. Do you have any examples of that? I mean, because those little things in there can save thousands of dollars over the yeah. course of a lease. Biggest thing, make sure that, um, you know, w that you have a right to um, renew when if you when your lease is up. Um, mm -hmm. Making sure you have the right to um, the spaces adjacent to you. Like, let's say you're growing, you know, you have the right to lease that space if it becomes available or grow uh, into it. Like, for, kind of first right? Yeah, first right to... Um, to first right of refusal on your adjacent spaces, um, making sure the landlord doesn't have the right to relocate you from where oh, you're wow. at. I mean, that's pretty <laughs> business yeah. interruption and all of that. Or if they do, what parameters are you going to put around that? You know, um, so that those are a few things that can really that are really important oh, yeah. as a company's growing and and again, you don't especially when you're in that you're in your business mode and those are things that aren't even on your radar to, to think about <laughs> at all. I think those are, those are huge. And that's why, I mean, that's why I wanted you to come on the show because those are those, I don't think we hear enough about things like this. I'm going to go rent space and, and I, and it just gets covered most places. So cut and dry. I go in here and I rent a space done. And there's so many layers like this that can cost you, can save you. I love that. Absolutely. And that, I mean, I think that's why we love working with startup companies to mid-sized companies, growing companies. Um, it's so important. And we, uh, we love to look for all those little things and make sure that you're covered and taken care of, um, wherever you go. Yeah. And that's the thing. That's, in the, that's the other part of, of finding a professional, not only somebody who, who can do that, but enjoys it you know yeah. i mean there's and that's a different mindset and they're going to go find them and have fun and you know dig in there i love that we get really excited by making sure landlords give you everything you want <laughs> Nice. <laughs> well i love it so so how do people find out more about about esrp and and connect with you and and kind of dig in there when they need when they need help yeah so esrp.com um, we also have um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, check us out. Some of the recent things we've been doing in Dallas, Fort Worth with some of the companies here and nationally. Um, check us out and then you can reach me. Um, uh, you can go to our website, click um, on our team, my page. You can um, get my email from there as well. Uh, Perfect. And uh, yeah, reach out. And, and any Excellent. questions, even if you're in the middle of something, a good friend of mine uh, is in the middle of moving uh, offices and um, and had some questions and is already in the process and, you know, not specifically for us, a time for us to get involved, but was able to help out and give some input and, and hopefully help um, shift where what position they were in. Um, oh, and that's wonderful. Always, you know, always here to answer any questions and, um, yeah. Fantastic. Awesome. Thanks so much for being on the show and, yeah. and giving us some great insights. Thank you for driving around. I hope you really enjoyed that interview with Sadia. Wow. So many insights I had no idea about when it comes to, comes to real estate. Um, maybe I'm naive with the whole thing and just haven't gone through it a lot. 
Um, but I, but I hope it's it's helped you as well. And if you know somebody who's at that that point, um, they're looking to make that move either in their first space or just their next space. Um, send this interview to them. Make sure that you know they're educated on the whole thing. Follow Sadia. You know, reach out to her, connect with her, um, and you know, get that help, get that guidance um, before you make that next move, or or someone you know makes that next move. If you like interviews like this, make sure you subscribe here on YouTube. And if you're listening on the podcast, make sure you jump over to iTunes real quick, leave us a review there, and subscribe. It helps us certainly get found more in the iTunes ecosystem there. And we'll see you on the next one. It's Saturday night. It was Saturday night and I'm feeling kind of silly When the coat on cause the air was chilly But I'ma make my way out to the record spot Gotta find some new breaks for the beats to rock I gotta come with the flavor like some lifesavers On now and later's Dr. Beatmaker If I'm a player it's like you take deck And if you miss the gig then take a rain check Stacks of wax piled high to the ceiling Need a U-Haul truck if I would think about stealing But it's not my speed so I commence with the digging No kidding, something that'll keep the beats hitting what I'm getting so much to choose from, bro.